Thank you. I could remember when the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria started in 2009, and I was registered as number 001. I told myself then that when God created man, man was alone. And today we have over 7.8 billion people across the globe. In the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, at the moment, we are over 8,000. Good to have you here today. Welcome to the August uh, gathering of the Institute in the month of uh, September. The Institute is also in collaborations with other professional bodies, like the Chartered Institute of Professional Managers in the US and the African Institute, African Institute of Strategic Managers, to mention but a few. Recently, we're also in collaboration with the uh, Hill City University in Bene Republic, of which uh, we have a credit transfer arrangement. And our members who wish to join the program from time to time will be going to the campus there to do the needful. My Lord, spiritual and temporal, distinguished fellows and members of the Institute, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm indeed highly honored and privileged to welcome you to this memorable induction exercise for fellows and membership into the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, whom African Institute of Strategic Managers. This institute is registered under the Companies and Allied Matters Act of 59, laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1990. I am therefore highly gratified at the response of many distinguished and eminent personages whose contributions and general understanding and conduct assisted in no small measure in view to elevating the Nigerian standard of work environment, compatibly our ability to improve in our day-to-day -day administrative and general management of our endeavors. It is in conjunction, therefore, with our modest approach of recognizing an individual or group of individuals whose earnest responsibilities are not quadrant by illusion or center ego and job performance and specifications that today's activity is born. Creditably, our Nigerian managers and administrators are in enviable cadres and canopies all over the world. It therefore suffices to ascertain herein that this much celebrated achievement of Nigerian apparatus are geometrically based on talent of experiences generated from convocations of this nature. One of the things that is not left behind by our leadership is the cognizance ability to honor outwardly, deserving people due praises in their lifetimes and not accolades after their demise. It is therefore a center stage of this institute that a certified manager needs training and retraining in order to be abreast to fundamental experimental mm -hmm. dynamos of administrative realities of the time. This in other words, Listen to elevate the standard of one's ability in juxtaposition with work value anywhere in the world. It is therefore our honor to inform you that the prestigious direct professional membership of the Institute will be given to deserving men and women whose socioeconomic lives are to a fire. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here as clusters, which according to Potter are geographically proximate groups of interconnected enterprises and associated institutions in a particular field linked by commonality and complementarity. The synergy driven from this network is what confers competitive advantage to cluster model of industrialization, which is bred from basic understandings as this. What we gather today will be of immense use in actualizing our goals in our various efforts. Having membership of the Institute is a highly colored decoration, as we are having synergy with reputable international fora as this. Members are therefore prone to professional trainings, through meetings, seminars, conferences, and other related courses at minimal contributions within and outside Nigeria. Members are also prone to improve and develop the science of management in commerce, industry, and politics by maintaining investigation and research into the application of such entities. 
members are equally given the secrets of success in business and the study and practice of its ethical principles with the mandate to raise professional practice to its highest. You are therefore entitled to full color membership certificate given under the approval of the council. We are here together as brothers and sisters. For in that way, will our mission statement be actualized. I therefore wish that we pay attention in our overall exercise, for we believe that Nigeria can be facilitated in general administration within our polity by many of us who are seated here today, even as our Nigerian brothers are helping Mother. other why congratulating everyone of you, distinguished members of this house, you know, and thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for that um, wonderful opening address. In the course of um, delivering the opening speech of the registrar, we'll all, um, uh, you will all agree with me that the membership of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria is not just for those who are who, or who study managers or management and administration in the at the university. The membership is open irrespective of your work or irrespective of your line of duty. Because we believe that management, allocation of uh, scarce resources, and uh, Managing human with managerial slash administrative um, skill line of duty. From the point of um, introduction, you all agree with me that we have people of um, different uh, different um, endeavor who are connected here today. Not just those who are occupying the position or of managers or those who study management and administration alone. Among us who are connected today, here today, we have engineers, we have, um, we have medical doctors, we have business owners and so on. So mention but few. Because here in Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators, uh, the Administrators of Nigeria, we believe in management, professionalism, and um, administrative efficiency. Because a time will come in your organization whereby you have to attain a position of a director, be an engineer, or a medical, uh, medic, uh, medical practitioner, we all know that the position of medical director is not all about injection giving and, um, and um, drug prescription, but it has to do with your managerial IQ because there are going to be so many people under you whom you are going to manage at that point. At times people do ask, What's the importance of um, IPMA to my line of duty as a medical practitioner or as a legal practitioner? We all know that in every aspect of our life, at a point, it's important for us to have little managerial skills because as a manager in every organization, we are the last to be fired. Even at times we die with the organization. That is why you see so many people, irrespective of their, their line of duty, they, they have different professional certificates, trying to gain little 
little knowledge from every other um, sector which makes up the organization. And in the course of um, today's induction, the team in which we are going to look into in the next one hour to one hour, 30 minutes or thereabouts is on the roles of a professional managers in a dynamic environment. At the beginning of um, this session, I made mention of the environment in which we are living in today be, being described in four acronyms, which is BUCA. That is the volatility of the environment, the uncertainty of the environment, the, the, the complexity of the environment in which we are operating and the ambiguity of the environment. As a manager in your organization, whereby you are confronted with this environmental crisis in which you don't have power over, are you going to allow your organization to go down the drain with the problem, just like, for instance, the storm of COVID-19 in 2020. Some organizations are still suffering from it today. Some were able to come out stronger. Why some did not even make it out at all to this present time we are talking? If you are the type of manager in that organization, yes, the wake of the pandemic was beyond everybody's um, imagination, was beyond everybody's reasoning. But will you allow your organization to go down the drain with the stub of COVID-19, even though we don't have power over it, or you will be the type that will be able to build a ship that will help you to navigate through the storm of such problem. I said earlier on that before now, the induction of the Institute normally take place in Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt. And if not that we were able to swing into action, even at the wake of COVID-19, when others were still waiting for the lockdown to be lifted so that they can return back to organizing physical training, at the peak of it, the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria were still dishing out our training seminars induction because of the advent of the technological advancement of this time that we were able to tap into. And as a result of that, if you are the type of manager in your organization that you are faced with this kind of problem, will you allow your organization to go down with it? Yes, at times we might not have power over the storm, but we can build a ship that will help us to navigate through, as I said earlier on. And at this junction, just like I used to please with those who are members of the Institute before those of us who are coming on board now, whenever we are getting to these critical points, I always plead with everyone to try as much as possible to unlearn his or herself so that we can learn and relearn. This is one of the important parts of what we are doing here today which is the paper presentation on the roles of a professional managers in a dynamic environment. It's not as if we are coming to teach new things, but rather we are coming to remind us of those things that we are already aware of, that we are not taking cognizance about. That managerial skills, that we are seeing as something that, oh, I don't really need to make do with this. We are coming to remind us about the importance. 
Because at times, some of the managers or as a leader, when you ask them or as a follower at times that what type of leadership or management style will you prefer? Somebody will tell you that he or she will prefer democratic, less affair, which is not that even common in this part of the world. Somebody else will tell you that, oh, autocratic is the best because you don't have to be soft with all these subordinates. You just have to be street. They have to, when they hear your name, they have to shiver. Or at the same time, somebody else will tell you that, no, even all these three, three style of uh, management, you might not really need them, but you have to work with the situation around you. I wouldn't want to take us on a lecture before the lecture itself. Like I said earlier on, let's unlearn ourselves so that we can learn and relearn. And on that note, I would like to hand you over back to the registrar of the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, who is going to help us do justice to the paper titled The Roles of a Professional Managers in a Dynamic environment. Mr. Registrar, sir, over to you. Thank you. Hello. Go on, sir. Yes, sir. OK, OK. Thank you. The moderator for the wonderful uh, analysis. As uh, professional managers, we are we are like the hub that rolls the wheel. Without us, all other managerial functions are useless. Before I proceed, I would like to throw this simple question to the intending members. Who can tell me who the first management uh, consultant on earth was? Who was the first management consultant on earth? Who gave advice that has to do with all the modern and traditional functions of management? You can unmute and tell us uh, who the first management uh, consultant on earth was. Hello? Who was the first management consultant on earth? Yes. It was Otto D. Little. Who? Otto D. Little. No. I think it was in 1880 something or so. I'm not sure. No. no. He may be a management guru, but not the first management consultant. We are talking of uh, who gave the first advice that has to do with modern and traditional functions of management. It is there in the Bible. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. And you're talking of the God Almighty himself. God has been there since uh, before the beginning, and uh, is the Alpha and the Omega. But uh, the man <laughs> that uh, gave the first advice, I'm not talking of God here. Hello. Hello. Uh, Hello, sir. Hello, Hello sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah, yeah, what? Yeah, drawn. Yeah, drawn. Okay. What, uh, what did he do? That has to do with he, the, the managerial function. He gave them uh, a managerial about Okay, yeah. A round of applause for him. It's... Yeah, it is Jetro. You, you got it let, right. Let me he came and met let me connect uh, Moses. with this one. He came and met Moses uh, operating as a one man manager. You can see today we still have some people behaving like Moses. They operate as one-man managers. 
No leave, no transfer. 365 days. They are there. <laughs> and uh, that will make them the way out easily. They go home and become useless to everyone. The madam will suffer. The children will not have uh, your attention. So if you are still the, the type that is behaving like Moses, you have to change your ways. Moses was operating as a one-man manager. He was doing everything by himself. It was when the father-in-law, Jethro, came and visited. He noticed that and called him to order. Son-in-law, if you continue this way, you wear out easily. You go home and become useless to my daughter. Why not choose among men leaders? Teach them laws and ordinances. Let them be adjudicating over lesser matter. Why you, Moses, will be there to give approvals? That advice by Jethro turns out to be the first advice given by the first management consultant on earth. You can see that it has to do with planning. It has to do with staffing. It has to do with leading. It has to do with directing. It has to do with budgeting. It has to do with all the modern and traditional functions of management. The post has been taken care of. So if you are the time that is in uh, tune uh, with the attitude of Moses then, then uh, you better change. Because uh, you cannot get, you, there is no how you can go far. If you want to walk uh, very fast, you will walk alone. But if you must walk far, walk with people. As a professional manager, we are the, like the hub that rolls the wheel. Without us, all other managerial functions are useless. We are the last to be fired in any organization. At times, we die with the organization. That is why we must have the little knowledge of everything. We must understand that resources are scarce and uh, has to be allocated, uh, it has to be allocated uh, optimally. That is why as professional managers, we must understand the aims. The men, machines, money, materials, methods, and the market. Let us take four out of the four of the aims. Money cannot go to materials to purchase without M that has to do with man. Materials cannot go to machines to produce without man. So as a professional, you must ensure the judicious allocation of uh, scarce resources. Let, uh, let us take one of the M, which has to do with the uh, men. As a manager, you must ensure that the right people are working in, in uh, the right people are doing the right things. Get the right people to perform optimally. Meritocracy has to be your watchword. You must understand the attitudes of the, the people under you, their conduct, their behaviors. Because you delegate to them as a leader too, We'll get to that later. You make them to do things for you willingly without coercing them. That shows how good you are as a manager. It's like uh, putting a round uh, peg in a round, uh, round pegs in round holes and square pegs in square, hole, in square holes. Not the other way around. Like what we do mostly in Africa is term the grandfather father son relationship. We do things based on a man no man and not on their merit. That is why you must ensure that uh, the managing the M that has to do with uh, the people under you, get uh, the right people to do the right things. Autocracy. And the second M has to do with machines. Has to do with machines. Your machines has to be in line with modern specifications, modern applications. Remember, we're in the world of competition. There are people that are not ready to go to sleep until you're already sleeping. 
always do things, uh, do what we call benchmarking. Things that will give you comparative advantage over your competitors. Your competitors are watching you. If your machines are archaic in nature, how do you expect to beat them to the game? Remember, they are always watching you. They are not going to sleep until you are sleeping. That is why in such organization, in such industry, if you must go to bed, you go to bed with one eye closed. Because there are competitors sniffing around. They are waiting to demarket you at any material time. Just like the case of uh, the first uh, GSM that came on board in Nigeria. Was it uh, Econet Wireless then? Followed by MTN. When they came on board uh, as at uh, 2001, they made us believe that uh, per second billing was not uh, it was, not, it was not an option. I could remember that, that time, just an ordinary hello. If it cuts, your 55 naira has gone down the drain. They were ripping their people off because uh, they enjoy a kind of a monopoly there. But immediately, Glow was launched, and they noticed that the market has already been saturated. Then they have to, they did what we call benchmarking, things that gave them comparative advantage over others. And that was when they made us understood that uh, per, uh, per second billing was feasible. You can exchange your MTN and Econet line for the Glow line, free of charge then. And the rest uh, was history. That was when uh, MTN and uh, these other people now made u turn if you can't beat them, you join them. That is why in the second M here, machines, your machines has to be in line with modern applications. It has to be in line with the 21st century machines. Not the situation you are still using where when we are operating on uh, digitals, you are now you are still on analogs. How do you expect to break even? How do you expect to, to, to tell your competitors that you are, uh, you are a fighter? Then you must do that. Then the third M we have to look into is that of materials. Materials. The stock level in the warehouse. At what level are you operating? If you are the type that is operating, we have three, three stock level. There's the other level, there's minimum level, and there is maximum level. If you are the type that is operating at minimum level, what do you think will become of your company in the, ad in the advent of COVID-19? When all companies, every nook and cranny of the, of the world was in total lockdown, how do you expect to come out of it? Maybe you are operating a bakery and uh, uh, COVID-19 or no COVID-19, you must supply your customers. People must eat essential commodities. And your, your flowers and other uh, stock in the warehouse, which uh, you are operating at a minimum level. With the advent of that uh, COVID now, and every nook and cranny was in total lockdown, how do you expect to break even? Don't you say that uh, you're already at a disadvantage position? Because you cannot get your raw materials any longer. And what you have in stock cannot carry you through. You can't pull through. Then you have all the disadvantages that uh, may likely pull down your organization. So let us take that one after the other. The three stock level in the warehouse, the maximum level, the, the, the reorder level, and the minimum level. The reorder level is the level which you must always initiate action for first supply. The level you must initiate action for fresh supply is called the reorder level. That is the equilibrium, the margin of safety. 
at that point, you must uh, ask your suppliers to bring more, 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 more goods to supply you so that you don't run out of stock. You don't operate at the minimum level. And if anything happens, like the COVID, like the June 12 of this country, and so many others, all the factors you cannot control, the macro environmental forces, the unforeseen forces, the uncontrollables, then uh, that will be the end of your organization. That is why you must always initiate action for fresh supply and operate at every other level. Then the other stock level is the minimum, uh, the maximum stock level. The maximum stock level is the level you must not allow stock to rise above. When you are operating at the maximum uh, level, you are in trouble. You tie down the, the cost of uh, capital, increase in the uh, cost of uh, warehousing, you could lead to privileges, breakages, and uh, what have you. Then uh, the minimum level is also the level you must not allow your stock to fall below. You are operating at the minimum level, you are looking for trouble. Take, for instance, you are, your company is in the uh, southeast, Onicha or Aba. Now that uh, there is a kind of uh, sit at home order, and the people are afraid if you go out, anything can happen to you. And uh, how do you think your the suppliers will get you your raw materials. That will become a problem. That is why you must always plan ahead, analyze uh, the environment, understand uh, the VUCA, the volatility, the uncertainties, the complexities affecting the environment. The factors militating against your environment must be analyzed. You must understand the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Always do what we call SWOT analysis. Because when you operate at the minimum level, it can lead to idle production. Your staff will just be sleeping, loitering around, have nothing to do. I do production. It can also lead to loss of goodwill. Your customers will start going to your competitors. And uh, not all of them that goes out may return back to you. It can even lead to the closure of your organization. Because uh, you fail to operate at a minimum, at a, at, at a real level. If you are at a real level and, and, it, and such things happen, you start looking for alternative source. You have enough time to play with. Unlike uh, when you are down. Then uh, the last M I would also like, want us to treat is that of uh, Is that of uh, money, money, men, machines, money, materials, money. It is here in the Bible, money answered all things. It is also there in the Quran, Al-Malu wal banuna zinatul hayata dunya. Money and children are the beauty of this world. That is why we believe that the life wire of every organization is finance. That is why the Companies and Allied Matters Act of 1990 stated that all information that will assist users of financial statements in assessing the viability, liquidity, and profitability of a company must be stated in a clear, logical, and understanding manner. For users of accounting information, we have the banks, we have the employees, we have the, state, uh, the providers of capital, and the business itself. Because in every business, we have what we call stakeholders. 
The employees are there. So how much is expected? Much is given. They are there for their salaries, wages, and other personal costs. Providers of capital are also there for their for dividend and interest. They must understand the true position of the company. What is at stake? What can they do? What uh, dividends are you declaring? And are you meeting up with paying your interest? That is what uh, the providers of capital want to know. If they understand you better and that uh, they are happy with the organization, they will uh, keep on uh, pumping more money to the company. That is why you must uh, understand uh, the way things uh, people do things. At that stage, some uh, companies are not uh, sincere because uh, there is what we call uh, window dressing of oats. Accounting professionals will understand that. Window dressing of oats. That is when you see companies producing two types of balance sheets, one for the members of the public and the others for the directors. The members of the companies, the directors will understand what is actually the true position of the company. While the directors, the outsiders can be bamboozled into bringing in more money without the actually understanding what is happening there. Like the case of Aaron, Aaron in the uh, United States of America. It has been a power, it, it, it was a power generating uh, company which has been in the state of insolvency for many years. But they kept on polishing their accounts, their books, to the point that uh, many people were involved. It was when a smaller company came to inquire and run that people actually knew that uh, the company was sick. That is what we call window dressing of oats, producing two types of balance sheets, one for the members of the public, and another for the directors. The stakeholders here are interested on their salaries, and they are interested on their interest and wages. They want to see what is declared at the end of every financial year. That is when they will be happy with you. Then the company itself is a stakeholder for maintenance and expansion. If you are operating at uh, Ground Zero today, you are expected to be at uh, ground three or ground four tomorrow. Let there be that uh, gradual growth, moving from one stage to another. Don't uh, manage yourself to, inside, to, to become a bankrupt. That is when everything you must do for the business must be reasonably, every expenses that must be incurred must be reasonably, wholly, and exclusively for the business. It must be reasonably, wholly, and exclusively for the business, so that you don't uh, you, 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 you don't spend frivolously. And as a professional manager, you must understand that the finances, the cash flow system, what is coming in and what is going out, the flow of funds in and out of the enterprise over a period of time. Because if you fail to do that, and you allow the things to be spent recklessly, you find yourself in the state of insolvency. You, can, you become a bankrupt because you can no longer pay for services rendered. You can no longer pay for loan obtained and have no resources to be up. An official receiver will be appointed of which uh, to wind down the company. There will, be, there will be public examination to ascertain why you are in the, level, in the state of insolvency. Is your being in that state as a result of your recklessness or carelessness in your management of affairs, or as a result of forces beyond your control? That must be ascertained at the public examination of being in that state. the flow of fund in and out of the enterprise over a period of time. So let us come back. I've been talking the paper since, but uh, let us come back to the 
to the paper, the team here, because not every one of us is from management background. That is why this discipline is a, of management is an interesting one. You see somebody from a different background, you must uh, do the work of a manager. Even in the hospital, you, the medical director is not in that position because he's the best uh, cesarean or he's the best uh, doctor. What is occupying the position of an administrator? In the engineering uh, this thing, department, the head there is also occupying the post of an administrator because he has to manage the men, machines, money, materials, all the resources has to be managed optimally. Even uh, uh, some people will tell you, I, uh, I'm not a manager, I don't want to join the institute, or I don't want to attend management at this thing. Even the housewives, <laughs> even those at, uh, our wives at home, they occupy the position of uh, managers too, because they have to manage a little, you are bringing to them. They have to manage that optimally. If not, a lot of things will go wrong. So let us uh, understand what management is. Let us look at the, the different uh, definitions. But you just understand the, the layman's uh, definition is uh, just believe that uh, when two or more people come together, together to roll a stone, and uh, it, is, it, is, it is rolled effectively and efficiently, management has taken place. When two or more people come together to achieve a set uh, objective, to achieve a set uh, goal, management has taken place. Management is a universal phenomenon. It is a very popular and widely used term. All organizations, business, political, cultural, or social are involved in management because it is the management which helps and direct the various efforts towards a definite purpose. According to Harold Kunz, management is an art of getting things done through and with, uh, and with the people in formally organized groups. When you get things done with people in a formally organized groups, management has taken place. The man using techno, please, uh, you are disturbing us. I'll mute your, your microphone. I've done that separately. When two or more people come together to do things in a formally organized group, management has taken place. It is an art of creating an environment. That environment you create must be a conducive one, which people can perform and individuals can cooperate towards attainment of group goals. Mr. Techno, Techno, POP, two power. You are disturbing the house, please. Unmute your microphone, uh, mute your microphone, please. Okay, sorry. According to F. Taylor, management is an art of knowing what to do. When you know what to do, when to do, and see that it is done in the best and cheapest way. That is F. Taylor for you. He believes that uh, when one knows what is uh, to do, when he's going to do that, and uh, see that it is done in the best and cheapest way, value analysis and value engineering has taken place. Two things, uh, uh, do, do things in an effective and efficient uh, way without uh, affecting uh, the quality and at the, uh, and at the cheap, uh, cheapest uh, price. So you can see that uh, F. Taylor is telling us that uh, when you know what to do, and when you are uh, when you are in the place to define what you are to do, when to do, and uh, how to go about it, and make sure that you have resources that will become uh, in parity with the set agenda, it shows that the uh, management has taken place. 
That is uh, how good you are at planning. You have to plan effectively. When you plan, when you plan to, uh, when you, when you, when you, when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. When you fail to plan, you stink. And when you stink, you sink. When you fail to plan, you sink, you stink. And when you stink, you sink. Therefore, we can say that good management includes both being effective and efficient. Being effective means doing the appropriate task, fitting the square pegs in square holes, and round pegs in round holes. Being efficient means uh, doing the task correctly, at least possible cost with minimum wastage of uh, resources. The management definition has taken place. You must understand the levels of uh, management. We have uh, the three levels. We have the top level management. That is the administrative level for the upper echelons, the strategic managers. We have the middle level managers. That is the executors, executory. Then uh, they, are the, they are the tactical managers. We have the low level managers, the supervisory operatives, first line uh, managers. We call them uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, operating staff. We have the, stra the strategic uh, uh, managers, that is, uh, those at the top. The tactical, that is the executors of the policies of uh, those at the top. Then uh, the supervisory, that is the operative uh, staff, the operative managers, they are the ones to, uh, to, to do the job. Managers at all these levels perform different functions. The role of managers at all the three levels is discussed below. You can see the diagram there. We have uh, the, the top, that is the, for the, those are the upper echelons, which consist of board of uh, directors, the managing directors, the chairman, the, uh, down to the, to, to, the, to the general managers. And you can see that uh, they, they are involved in executive coaching, change management, leadership, delegation, and empowerment. They must uh, tell the tactical uh, managers what is to be done. They coach them, let them understand the vision of the organization. Then uh, we must, they, at this stage, they have to play leadership role, make people happy, make people to do the job, make people should be willing to perform, uh, do things, perform magic without uh, go asking them. Then delegation, you, they are not the ones uh, directly involved with uh, uh, the operation. They delegate to the tactical managers who are the executors of the policies uh, implemented, uh, form, for, uh, of the policies uh, formulated by the upper echelons. So you delegate to them. Make them understand. That is why you must, uh, you must get the right people to do the right job. Remember one of the M I've uh, I, I explained uh, earlier. You must uh, ensure that a round peg is uh, in a round hole and the square pegs uh, and square pegs in square holes. Not uh, as a result of what I term grandfather father son relationship. Delegate to people who can uh, do the uh, perform uh, optimally. When you delegate to your subordinate, you free up uh, your time to explore into the unknown and empowerment. Give them uh, what uh, the resources has to be in parity with uh, the agenda. If it is not, uh, then uh, such an objective is dead, on, uh, is dead on arrival. Then the second one, you can see the middle, middle level managers, that is the executors. They are the problem solvers. The team, uh, they, uh, at that stage, they build uh, the teams that uh, could deliver. Then uh, talent development, they get the right uh, people that uh, will perform optimally. Then uh, performance management, they also look at the performance, look at those that are doing well, and uh, they, uh, re they recommend them for promotion. Those that are not, uh, that are not uh, performing up to date can uh, be asked to go on uh, training and so many other things that will uplift uh, their performances. Then uh, we have the low level managers, that is the tactical, man the operating uh, managers. Then uh, the emotional intelligence and coaching, 
for performance. They are always there to do the uh, to do the jobs in uh, tune with the with the with the policies of uh, uh, the upper echelons. Then uh, let us take uh, them one by one. The top uh, level management consists of board of directors, chief executive, or managing directors. Managing directors. The top management is the ultimate source of authority, and it manages goals and policies for an enterprise. It devotes more time on planning and coordinating functions. The role of the top management can be summarized as follows. Top management lays down the objectives and broad policies of uh, the enterprise. Lays down the objectives and the broad policies of the enterprise. You can see that uh, these are the conce conceptual thinkers. They think outside the box. At this stage, you must think outside the box. If possible, shatter that box and get results. You can see you must formulate uh, that policy. If you are, if you are uh, as a company in the uh, in the era of uh, COVID-19, what uh, policies can you come up with that uh, will be will be, that will lead to the superordinate uh, goals of uh, the, to make uh, that will make you to achieving the superordinate goals of the organization? So you can see that. Uh, you must brainstorm at this stage. They are the policy formulators. You have to conceptualize, be creative and innovative. Come up with ideas. That is why we are saying that uh, the top management lays down the objectives and broad policies of the enterprise. You must define uh, what is to be done. That uh, objective has to be smart or smarter in acronym. It must be specific. It must be measurable. It must be uh, realistic. It must have a time bound which can be evaluated and reviewed. It issues necessary instructions for preparations of department's budget, procedures, schedules. That uh, agenda you have set, you must ensure that uh, the resources that has to be in parity with uh, the set uh, agenda, or else it could be dead on arrival. It prepares strategic plan and policies for the enterprise. You must prepare where you are. You must plan from where you are presently and where you are hoping to be. Your mission and vision statement must be understood. Then appoint the executive for middle level as the departmental managers, as a, as a, as, a, as the top management, as, as the upper echelons are the ones to appoint. A, the tactical managers, those who could be the executors of uh, their policies formulated, controls and coordinates the activities of all departments. Yeah, we have uh, different um, line managers. They are called line managers. Like we have in personnel, we have in uh, admin, in uh, finance, slash account, in uh, purchasing, and so many other things. They now coordinate. You control the coordination of uh, activities in all departments. That is why they are called administrative managers. They must have little knowledge of everything. It is also responsible for maintaining the contact with the outside world. They also provide guidance and direction since they are the policy formulators. The top management is also responsible towards the shareholders for performance of the enterprise. Remember, I told you earlier, that as a professional manager, as a, a, a member of uh, the upper echelon, you must understand the flow of fund in and out of the enterprise, the cash flow system, the, how the cash is generated and utilized so that uh, the stakeholders, which uh, uh, one of the, uh, the stakeholders, like that of the providers of capital, will be given a proper account because you are responsible towards the uh, shareholders for the performance of the enterprise. You tell them in the year under review, this is what we have added, these are the machines we have bought, this is what we have done, and this is what we are declaring as dividends. If they are happy with you, then uh, uh, you proceed. And uh, they end up investing more money. Then uh, the middle level uh, management consists of the branch managers and departmental managers, constitute middle level. They are responsible to the top management for the functioning of their department. Understand that the top middle level managers are responsible to the top uh, management, that is to the upper echelons, 
to the strategic managers for the functioning of their department. They devote more time to organizational and directional functions. Their role can be emphasized as they execute the plans of the organization in accordance with the policies and directives of the top management. They are the executors. That is why they must execute the plans of the organization in line with uh, the vision and the mission of the upper echelons of the organization. <coughs> Excuse me. They make plans for the subunit of the organization as a tactical manager with the line managers makes plan for their subunits. If you are in charge of accounts, you make plan, you must draw your schedule, draw your budget, and so many other things. Likewise, other departmental managers. They participate in employment and training of lower level management. Since they are the executors, they understood uh, what uh, the policy formulators are looking for, then uh, they have to train uh, the lower level managers. That is the operating, uh, operative uh, managers. They interpret and explain policies from top level management to lower level. They will tell the lower level managers, the operating uh, managers, the superintendent, the sectional heads, that this is what we want. This is what the top level want us to achieve. You must interpret that in the language that will be understood uh, by them. They are responsible for coordinating the activities within uh, the division or department. Coordination is important here. You must uh, coordinate uh, what is uh, uh, the activities uh, within uh, your unit. Also send important reports and uh, important data to top level management. There must be periodic uh, reports, which uh, you send to the top uh, level. They also evaluate performance of junior managers. You must evaluate your performance at the end of the year, those that uh, will be recommended for promotions, those that uh, will be asked to go for training, and uh, what have you. They are also responsible for inspiring lower level managers to a better performance. You inspire them, you delegate uh, functions to them, you increase the uh, look at areas where they, they are not uh, happy and see what can be done. Remember, the one of the stakeholders I've uh, mentioned earlier. The employees are there for, uh, for, for, for salaries, wages, and other personal costs. So who much is uh, expected, much is uh, given. Then uh, we move to the lower level management. It's also known as supervisory, operative uh, level of management. You can see there are the operators. They, it consists of supervisors, foreman, section officers, superintendents. According to R.C. Davis, Supervisory management refers to those executives whose work has to be largely with personal oversight and direction of operative employees. In other words, they are concerned with direction and controlling function of management. Their activities include, they are the operators, assigning of jobs and tasks to various workers. They assign jobs and tasks to uh, staff under them. Decentralization is key. They guide and instruct the workers for day-to-day -day activities. On day-to-day -day activity, on, uh, on daily basis, they will tell their uh, subordinates, this is what is expected of, of us today. These are the quantities uh, needed, the quality also, and uh, so many other these things that uh, need to be done. They are responsible for the quality as well as quantity of production. The quality and the quantities must be ascertained. They are also entrusted with the responsibility of maintaining good relations in the organization. They communicate workers' problems, suggestions, and recommendatory appeal to the higher level and higher level goals and objectives to the workers. You can see, you can see that is a two ways uh, communication. They communicate to the, the through their through through the middle level managers to the upper echelons. That is the strategic managers. And the strategic managers also communicate, uh, that is a uh, upward uh, communication. Then uh, another, the downward one from the, uh, uh, the, the, the from those at the top, the upper echelons uh, uh, via the, the uh, tactical managers, the executors, down to the operating uh, staffs, operating staff. 
So you can see that uh, uh, you, they will communicate in such a way, maybe when they are having problems, the grievances, they will tell uh, their supervisor, their sectional heads and uh, foremen and uh, so many other things that look, this is what uh, is happening. There's a lot of things are expensive in the market today. Maybe now that uh, PIB has been signed and uh, petrol will go for like uh, 300 uh, naira upward and the government uh, is uh, doing their permutations at the moment. If it is uh, approved, this is what uh, we want you to tell management on our behalf because it will no longer be feasible for us to come uh, to the office. Or now that the bag of rice is equivalent to, to, to the minimum wage, you, the, uh, that such communications are bound to happen. You, that is where they will tell you that, look, 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 we cannot, uh, uh, we are going to down tool. If nothing, nothing is done, then uh, the, all like uh, the people on strike now, the resident uh, doctors. So you can see now, a lot, lot of uh, permutations are going on there. The lecturers are, they are also uh, warming up for another round again of uh, strike. So you can see a lot of things, which uh, the workers you, they must, uh, they complain their grievances through their, their unit heads, their sectional, their, their, their superintendent to the upper level. And uh, the upper level will now tell you, look, if we are going to give them this, then our output has to be increased from so, 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 so unit to so, so, so unit for us to meet up with, uh, uh, meeting up with, uh, with such payments. Just like uh, somebody that was uh, about to get a job somewhere, when he was interviewed, he told them that uh, he can only take the job if the company will pay him up to 500,000 Naira monthly. The manager then uh, told him, no problem. We are ready to pay you as far as you are, you are going to accept uh, our conditions. That means uh, if we will pay you 500,000, these are the certain things we want you to do at the end of the month. There must be much, 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 much turnover at the end of the day. At least let us uh, make profit of uh, over 5 million every month and they will, will, will pay you. That was how the guy just uh, left without uh, saying anything. Because uh, management is interested uh, on what you are bringing to the table. What are you bringing to the table? If you have nothing tangible to communicate, if you have not, nothing tangible to contribute, then uh, such an uh, agenda will be dead on arrival. So uh, it helps to solve uh, the grievances of workers, people working under you that are not in good time. You so resolve your grievances, make them understand that uh, uh, their dispute would uh, be counterproductive to the organization. They supervise and guide the subordinates, you guide them on the job, supervise them to make sure that they are doing the right things. They are responsible for, for providing training to the workers. The tactical uh, manage, the operating uh, managers will train uh, their subordinates on what is to be done. They arrange necessary materials, machines, tools for getting things done. Resources has to be in parity with the, uh, to achieving the superordinate goals of the organization. They prepare periodical reports about the performance of the workers. That is good. At least uh, it's good for the management to see that uh, uh, they, are, they are growing from strength to strength. They ensure discipline in the enterprise. You use the carrot and stick. But if somebody is misbehaving, then uh, after some time and it's not ready to change, then uh, you, use, uh, you use the stick. You don't use the carrot every time. At times, you use, the, you use the stick. Others that uh, want to go in this direction, we take a better position without, uh, uh, because they have seen the consequences. They motivate their workers. You must motivate your workers, get them uh, the necessary things that will make them deliver. Motivation to us in Africa is all about money. When you tell somebody I'm increasing uh, your alawi by so, 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 amount by 40% now, you see him working as if there will be no tomorrow. You'll be happy doing the job. Motivation to some people will be in form of a delegation. When you delegate uh, to, your, uh, to your subordinate, some subordinate will be happy doing your job in the organization. Some subordinate uh, will be aspiring to be in your position by the time you will no longer be in the organization. 
That is why we believe that uh, effective delegation begets effective succession plan. That's what to call the MBO, Management by Objective, propounded by Peter Drucker, which every members of the company will come together to discuss the way forward. Management by uh, objective begets management by commitment. If you are part of the decision that has to do with the productivity, that has to do with the late coming, that has to do with the everything, you want to change for the better so that the superordinate goals of the organization can uh, be achieved. Then we'll now go to the essential tasks of a, a professional manager. What are the tasks of a manager? The responsibilities of a manager arises out of the various social interactions in which the firm is engaged for the pursuit of its business. Here, uh, here, here is a list of uh, nine uh, important responsibilities a professional manager has to carry out. One of that is uh, providing a certain goal to the firm, a certain goal to the firm, a certain goal to the firm. Anticipating the goal of the firm is the first and foremost thing a manager is expected to do. Dividing and attributing roles to the other employees according to their work profile is of utmost importance. You can see here now, they are telling us to provide a one of uh, the role here is to provide uh, a certain goal to the firm. There must be an agenda to accomplish. Remember, I told you earlier that uh, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. If you fail to plan, you stink. And when you stink, you sink. Providing a certain goal to the organization, to the firm. That is why you must uh, understand that uh, any tax that must be given to your subordinate must be smart or smarter as in an acronym. If a tax is not specific, such tax will be dead on arrival. It has to be measurable. It must be realistic. It must be achievable. It must have a time bound, which can be evaluated and reviewed. If a delegated task is not smart or smarter, such task is dead on arrival. It must be specific have a proper definition. This is what I'm out to achieve. Remember, you must plan what is to be done. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. If you fail to plan, you stink. And when you stink, you sink. It must have a, a proper definition. These are the things we are out to do. This is what we want uh, it for. This is uh, how we want it done. And uh, what have you? It must be specific. It must also be measurable. You must have a standard to enable you measure against the actuals. A standard versus the actuals for you to see for deviations and how deviations can be corrected. It must be achievable. Is it an achievable task? Think up. There's one program I was listening to the other time. The man will say, you don't think I'm. So you must think about uh, what is to be done. Is it an achievable task? How realistic is the task? If a task is so bogus in nature, it is not something that uh, could be a, a realizable one. Then uh, such task, is that on arrival? Then uh, time, it must have a time bound. If you are giving out a task, you must uh, the resources that has to go with such task has to be based on time. What is the time bound? Time of accomplishment. That is why in the engineering, in others, we have what we call project evaluation and uh, review techniques, the parts. You look at the critical analysis. If you are going to Sokoto, the man from Sokoto, I can see that so we have somebody from Sokoto here. If you are going to Sokoto now, from, you are going to Lagos from Sokoto. Do you still come back to Abuja before going to Sokoto, before going to reaching Lagos? <laughs> no, I know you are going straight through uh, Yauri down to Kotongora, then Mokwa, Jeba, 
Uh, Mama Shaw and every other thing, then uh, Ibadan, then straight to Lagos. If you decide to come through Abuja, if uh, you are that manager or you are giving such tasks, you, such tasks will be dead on arrival. There is no how you meet up with time. It must uh, have a time bound. Time. I will, I, will, I will come back to that. And uh, it can also be evaluated and uh, reviewed based on the actuals, actual performance uh, over, over the standard performance. You now see areas where you are deviated and how deviations can be corrected. So let us come back to time. As a professional managers, how do we become uh, effective time managers? You can see that uh, most of us have equal amount every day, which is the 24 hours. Yet we complain of no time. We complain of no time. But we have equal amount of time. And yet we are always complaining. That shows that uh, we are not good at managing our time. Someone who could not manage his time perfectly, given uh, an, uh, an urgent task, is bound to fail because it will keep on giving you excuses. Oh, look, the time is too short. There is no time and every other thing. We have equal amount of time, which is the 24 hours. For you to be an effective, manage, time, effective uh, time manager to achieving the super high goals of your organization, you must manage your time uh, accurately. You must manage your time accurately and effectively. That is why a professional manager must be a good uh, time manager. We have to look at the principles of effective time manager. One of that is a principle of planning. Princi principle of planning. When you fail to plan, you plan to fail. When you fail to plan, you stink. And when you stink, you sink. You must plan what is to be done. Tomorrow is Sunday. And how do you plan your time? You must have a kind of a, you, you do what we call time mapping. Time mapping. The mapping of your time. You must have a to-do list. That is a schedule. A schedule of what is to be done on Monday. From 8 o'clock to 8.30, I should be on my desk to clear all backlogs. From 9.30 to 11 o'clock, I should be going around the department to see what is happening, to see whether they are working, uh, give them uh, guidance and directions. From uh, 10 o'clock to uh, 12 o'clock, meet with uh, customers to understand whether they are happy with your uh, company or not. You have a suggestion to, to see the suggestions they have for you. From one o'clock to two o'clock, to meet uh, with the banks or with the account uh, department to understand the flow, the cash flow system. From two o'clock to three o'clock, to meet with the purchasing manager, to uh, understand the stock level in the warehouse. Then from uh, 3 o'clock to 3.30, to meet with uh, the engineers and the machines working uh, optimally. Any, any deviations, you must ask questions. That shows uh, you have mapped out your time. You, ha you have done what you call time mapping. You have uh, the schedule. That is what the first principle of uh, managing our time effectively is telling us to do. Principle of planning. Plan your schedule accurately, what is to be done. Then the second principle I would like us to look into is uh, organizing and prioritizing. Organizing and uh, prioritizing. You already have a to-do list. You must uh, prioritize, organize them and prioritize. You must understand the task which is urgent and the task that are important. 
in organizing and prioritizing, we must understand the urgent task and the important uh, task. The urgent task and the important task. Once you understand that, one thing you should have at the back of your mind is that uh, a task could be important, but not urgent. What they are telling you here now is that uh, do away with uh, the, the important task first. You must uh, accomplish the urgent task. But don't procrastinate. Don't procrastinate to such a time the urgent, uh, the important task could become problematic for you to handle. Because every important task could become uh, urgent at another time. Prioritize the urgent and the important task. Go ahead and perform the urgent task. Then come back immediately and uh, trash the, and do the, the, do the important ones. Because if you procrastinate, the important task will become urgent and problematic for you to handle. Then another this thing, a principle we must look into is the 80-20 rule. 80-20 rule, known as Pareto principle. Pareto was an Italian and came up uh, with this, uh, with the 80-20 rule which is uh, widely known as Pareto Principle today. He believes that 80% uh, of 20% uh, of our results produces 80% results. The 80-20. Maybe now you are a marketing company, you did the advertisement on behalf of your organization, you got 1,000 people, which is 100%. Then 20% of that uh, 1,000 will be not uh, 200. And out of that uh, 200, you should be expecting 80% results. Then uh, the fourth principle I would like us to look into is to avoid distractions. Avoid distractions. Anything that will make you not to get to the promised land, do away with it. The Bible says that if your house will cause you sorrow, cut it off. Those friends that will make you not to achieve uh, uh, something meaningful in life, do away with them. They are not needed. You gather the willpower when you are in the office to log off your social media account. I see no reason why some people will come to the office in the morning and all they know how to do is to be shouting friends and uh, relations. It is uncomfortable. You are there for a purpose. Go ahead to do that. And everyone will be happy. Gather the willpower. And if your phone is a type that rings so loudly, like uh, the Shinko phones, though they are better now, because among them we have uh, we have the Infinis, we have the so many other brands now that are doing uh, excellently in Nigeria. In those days, when the Chinese phone, uh, you know what I'm saying, it can even wake the dead, and uh, <laughs> it, it it could distract anyone. That is why you must uh, make the world a quiet place. Avoid distractions. Another principle is also telling us to delegate. Delegate effectively. When you delegate to your, your subordinates, those who can do the job without much uh, interference from you, then you are freeing up more time to explore into the unknown. to explore into the unknown. You delegate to them and uh, they go ahead to do the job. By so doing, you free up more time.
Another principle is telling us to learn how to say no. <coughs> Always learn, learn how to say no. Most especially when you have an urgent task at hand and your superior is trying to bring another urgency. You learn how you tell him, sir, you speak in the language that you understand you. You know, if you want to be multitasking, you end up actually having problems and you may not deliver on time. I know some people tell you in the organization, they want you to multitask. It's good to work uh, from one department to the other, but uh, not when you are having two urgent tasks to accomplish. The only position that will make you to accept that is when you have subordinates who are capable, which you can delegate to. You delegate to them and uh, they move on to accomplish uh, such task on your behalf. But the situation where you are alone and they want to multitask, you end up uh, with so many confusions. And uh, there is no how you can achieve in the superordinate goals of the organization. Learn to say no. Speak to your boss in the language that you understand. Except if he's trying to tell you the other, the other task you have, which was urgent before, is important and no longer, no longer urgent. Always learn to say no. Then I, I, in managing your time effectively, I want you to invoke the D's, the D's of effective uh, time management. We have the four D's. That is uh, four D's. And one of the D is do it now. One of the D is do it now. Another one is delete, delete. Another D is differ. Why the last one is to delegate. We have a do, we have delete, we have differ, and we have a delegate, delegate. Okay, let me, with uh, the understanding so far, let me put uh, this question through to the house. I want you to unmute and uh, contribute because this uh, is supposed to be an interactive session. We are here to learn from one another. If a task is uh, important, but not urgent, which of the D are you going to invoke from the four Ds? Hello? Hello, sir. If a task is, uh, is uh, important, but not urgent, which task, which of the D are you going to invoke? Hello, sir. Hello. You do what? Hello. Do it now. No, if a task oh, is important Mr. but not urgent. No. You defer. You defer. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you defer. You defer. You defer. Yes, sir. Because, but yes, sir. when you are differing it, you, uh, you should not uh, procrastinate. So such a time, such a uh, uh, important task will become uh, urgent and problematic for you to handle. Thank you for that. Okay. Then uh, if a task is neither urgent nor important. Which of the D are we going to invoke? Delete. Hello, ma. Delete. 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 That is, uh, you see the, you cross it, the crossing sign. You delete. That is uh, when you are having junks. You are already having junks. What you do is to delete them. Just like when you go through your mailbox in the morning, you can see that you have over 1,000 uh, mails. And out of that thousand mails, maybe you when you when you filter them, you notice that there are only five uh, are needed there. Then uh, what do you what uh, you delete uh, the remaining uh, nine hundred and uh, ninety-five uh, mails because they are junk. If you want to go through them one by one, when they are not urgent or important, then you may end up wasting the whole day on uh, those ones, and uh, it could be problematic for you to handle the urgent tasks. Thank you for that, man. Then uh, if a task is urgent, what do we do? If a task do it now. And not important. What do, what do we do? The urgent task. You do what, sir? Delegate. No, urgent task. Do it now. Task, sir? Do, do, it, do now. it now. Do it now. Yes, you are right. You do it now. Because if a task is urgent, 
Remember, I told you in the second principle, uh, organizing and prioritizing, of which we have the urgent task yeah. and the important task. The urgent task can uh, is something you do it now. Why the important yeah. ones you differ to such a time it will be convenient for you to do, but don't procrastinate to when it it, it becomes uh, problematic for you to handle. Then, uh, if a task is urgent and you have an additional urgency. Uh, and uh, another urgent task to handle. What do you do? If you have competent people to manage for you. You delegate. You delegate, yeah. You delegate. That is, uh, when you delegate to your subordinate, you have uh, time. You free up uh, time to at least uh, go into the unknown. A round of applause for every one of you. Yeah. Yeah, let us come back. So we are through with the, the setting goals to the organization. Then managing internal and external growth, which is the second rule here. Managing internal. Okay, you can unmute your, you can mute your microphones now. Please mute your microphones. Managing internal and external growth. Factors pertaining to internal growth by the means of technology being used, efficiency of labor, the icon of the organization, financial resources, etc. These are the controllables, the forces you can control within the organization, the micro environmental uh, factors that uh, are taken care of by the manager. The external factors include government policies. These are the macro, macro environmental forces, the unforeseen uh, forces, the uncontrollables. <laughs> Like uh, that of government policies, it affects uh, your business and uh, you cannot uh, control it. Then like the laws and regulations, changing and uh, delivering a product according to the demand of the customers. Then uh, the third uh, role here, maintaining the organization's efficiency. The fourth one, building assets for the organization, get the right people. Uh, it's like by putting uh, round pegs, by putting round pegs in round holes, and square pegs and square holes. Then the fifth year, being innovative. You have to be a conceptual thinker. Always think outside the box. Do things that will give you comparative advantage. As a, you think outside the box, if possible, shut out that box. You have to work, work, work around. Now, as a professional manager, you know everything we do, we have to be creative. We have to be innovative. Now, you, you can see that the, the Nigerian environment, it's very hostile and clustered. Then if you cannot uh, adjust, uh, we, we have to adjust or we adapt or where, where many are quitting the environment. So you can see that uh, you have to be innovative, be creative. Now, uh, uh, as at yesterday, uh, exchange rate, well, a pounds was about 700 and something naira. Why dollars was about 540 to 40 something naira. So you can see that, uh, what, uh, how do you improve yourself? So you have to think, if your business is uh, operating uh, at the uh, in the local market, how do you, how do you get the export uh, license to start uh, exporting it and uh, people will be paying you with uh, uh, you, uh, paying in USD? You as a manager, you have to think all these things around. You have to try and think outside the box, get things done. Make sure that uh, you, you are creative and uh, uh, innovative. To innovate new ideas for the organization, to cultivate those ideas so that uh, they match the new trends. You can see the new trends, things are changing. They are not constant, they are dynamic. Remember the volatility we have today, the uncertainties and the complexities uh, uh, we have on ground. Always look out for competitors. They are competitors, people who are not ready to go to bed until you are already sleeping. People who are not ready to, uh, people, who are not, people who are always uh, sniffing around. So make sure that they understand uh, uh, what you are into. So you must understand them. Just like in 1986, when 7UP uh, came up with uh, the 12 the Urisa, the difference uh, is clear. You can see that uh, many people were busy consuming 7UP products at the detriment of uh, Coca-Cola products. When they saw that they were losing their market share, they went back to the drawing board by coming up uh, with an enlightenment campaign using NAPDAC on the danger of sugar. And that was how they killed the uh, seven of uh, 
product uh, till date. In 1995-96, those of us in Lagos, uh, we witnessed uh, the 50 CL bottle, the introduction of 50 CL by Pepsi and Mirinda, which we call uh, Oroboden in Lagos. It was sold for 15 Naira, the same price of a 35 CL brand of a Coca-Cola products. So many of us uh, switched uh, instantly to Pepsi Mirinda because we wanted to, we, we got values for our spending. So when the Coca-Cola product saw what was happening, they now went back to their drawing board and came up with what we call Solo, the 25 CL bottle, which was sold for 10 Naira then. You can see that uh, always look out for competitors. A management, a manager is expected to conceive and uh, com contemplate for increasing competition. And when I use competition, I mean, I mean it in terms of more producers, product, quality, management of product, and profit to the organization. So uh, you can a market that is al al already saturated. You can decide to use a penetration strategy. Things that will give you an uh, uh, things that will give you comparative advantage over your competitors. I could remember when Cow Bell came on board. The Cow Bell came on board. They uh, started uh, with uh, this uh, sachet uh, production. So, and at uh, that time, most of our, our our people were used to buying uh, their meat in uh, large uh, cartons or the the agolo type. A gongoni type. So imagine what uh, happened. These people came on board and they started producing it uh, 5 5 naira, 10 10 naira in sachet. The big uh, players were laughing at them. But uh, within a year, they, get, they got over 10 million uh, consumers. Imagine where 10 million people are consuming uh, 10 10 naira every day. If you are that manager, won't you be happy? To be 10 million, uh, your data shows the organization is making up to 100 million daily. So you can see that uh, it was a huge uh, distant uh, boom for them. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, if they couldn't beat them, they have to join them. That is why you see peak today in Sachet. Even there's a liquid uh, in Sachet too, and so many other things. They are thinking outside the box to make sure that uh, they get uh, to the final consumers. Then uh, these other people too, when the aerial uh, and uh, these other people clean, came on board. But in those days, I could remember as a child, my dad they used to buy elephants, the big carton then. But today, how many of us are still buying that? Omo, Omo was in big uh, pack then too. But uh, today now, you can go to the market and get something soft, something uh, without uh, stressing uh, your budget. So you get, uh, they came and uh, started selling uh, 55 Naira too, and uh, so many other things, and people were busy patronizing them. So that is why in the market that is uh, already saturated, you do what you call benchmarking. Think of how you can hit the major players below the belt and get your market share. Interaction with employees and customers, interact with your employees, see uh, areas where they are not happy with the organization, and see what can be done to create a, a better working, working environment. And your customers also, you will have a suggestion box to them. If they are happy, they can tell others. If they are not happy, they should come back and report to the company. Deliver social responsibility, you give back to the host community, amenities. Amenities. That uh, you have to deliver that role. The, you deliver the role of a, of a, a philanthropist here. Be a factor of change. You can see the various duties of a professional manager, the supervisory role, the change management, decision making. In decision making, you make decisions that uh, will stand the test of time. That is why you see us uh, making difficult decisions. You have to do things uh, rightly. Then the leadership skill, you must uh, do uh, things, uh, you, you get people, to, to do things for you willingly without coaxing them. Look uh, to their professional managers, employees look to their professional manager to provide guidance through his leadership skill. He offers on the job training, you train them, give them support, give, uh, be a good coach to them, be a good listener to your subordinate. 
because a good leader must also be a good listener. Involves uh, having the ability to motivate, motivate your, uh, the people working uh, under you towards uh, a better performance. Try to encourage your employees to be enthusiastic and independent. Give them a listening ear. Then the functions of management. Remember, I discussed that earlier in the, the story of uh, Moses and Jethro. Remember, we have done that. I can see that uh, the moderator is already passing his signal. That my time is off, but uh, I need five minutes to round off. The functions of management, you can see that as uh, the post uh, curve there. That is the post curve here, P O S D C O R V, where P stands for planning, O for organizing. S for staffing, D for directing, C O for coordination, R for reporting, and B for budgeting. That has to do with uh, the story of uh, Moses and Jethro. The modern and the traditional functions of management has to be taken care of. But uh, the most uh, widely accepted uh, functions of management given by Coons and O'Donnell. That is planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and uh, controlling. You can see the diagram there, planning, controlling, organizing, staffing, directing. It has been taken care of one by one because of this presentation. We have explained them uh, interchangeably. So you can see that uh, you, they are there up to motivation, then communication. They always communicate in the language that uh, will be understood, not uh, by using an ambiguous language, then the dynamic uh, environment. The environment is always hostile and clustered. As a professional manager, we must understand the forces the macro forces that are militating against our environment and uh, do what we call SWOT analysis by understanding the strength, weakness, opportunities, and strength. Economic environment refers to as the sum total of all those factors, forces, which are capable of affecting the health of the economy. Economic environment can be classified into two, namely external and uh, internal environment. External environment is the totality of all available forces outside the economy and over which the economy has no control. You can see that is why it is external, because we have no control. That is why we call that uncontrollable. That is why we call that macro environmental forces. Among the external environment are specific and general. Specific forces are those variables that affect the organization. They may include the customers, suppliers, competitive firms, investors, and the internal organization challenges. These are called the controllables, the micro. Then the general forces are the forces that affect that affect uh, all the firms of an industry. They may be social, political, legal, technological, or technological situation. It could be cultural. It could be uh, so many other factors beyond our controls. Nigerian economic environment is very dynamic. It is characterized by uncertainty. Remember the VUCA? It is very volatile. It is, uh, has uh, uncertainties, uh, complexity, and uh, difficult to manage. Policy somersault and inconsistencies because of the huge amount of uh, uncertainty, planning becomes a Herculean task. The professional manager can therefore forecast factors of economic environment because they are dynamic. The, the professional manager can be very rapid and if they are not anticipated. However, if the changes are technical in nature, they can be very rapid. And if they were not anticipated, there are possibilities that uh, anything can happen. Beside the economic environment comprises of many factors, all these factors are related to each other. Thus, their individual effect on the economy can hardly be recognized. Dynamic and economic environment are related to the local conditions. And this is the reason the economic environment differs from one country to another. You go through that on your own. The SWOT analysis is there. You must uh, analyze the environment, understand the strength, the weakness, opportunities, and threat. The professional manager has a Herculean task 
a managing turbulent economies. A professional manager is expected to do the following, anticipating labor market and economic trends, coordinating workforce investment activities with economic development and education strategies, bringing relevant parties together to address workforce and competitive challenges in a sustainable and a collaborative way, promoting the participation of employers in the public workforce investment system, ensuring the effective provision of connecting, brokering, and coaching activities through intermediaries to help employers meet hiring needs and competitiveness concerns, developing linkages with economic development activities, including available state and local economy retention and recruitment activities, devising and overseeing strategies for incumbent worker retraining, training, developing layoff aversion strategies, exchanging information about potential dislocations, exploring early interventions and pre-feasibility studies for alternatives. Professional managers cannot control the weather. Understand that. We cannot control the weather, but can design and build a ship and equip it with a leadership team. That is leaders, leaders that uh, can deliver, functional leaders that can navigate the ocean under all weather conditions. Organizations that become more flexible and skillful at making critical decisions when the timing is right have enormous opportunities to capture market and profit from companies that persist in managing as if the future economic environment is reasonably predictable. It is difficult to create an Estradamos out of a professional manager because whatever they do is within the confines of bounded rationality. No one can forecast with specific accuracy what event tomorrow brings. What is critical, however, is that investors need assurance that they have made the right investment choices that does not remove on the uncertainties in life's endeavors. But more information and education helps the professional manager make better decisions. Even if the future is not uh, always certain, intelligent planning does help. Uncertainty of life sometimes causes glitches in what could otherwise be a, a foolproof forecasting formula. Professional managers are no prophets at all. As a professional manager, well, we have reached uh, the end of uh, the presentation, but I will also want you to know as a professional manager, you must have what to understand what we call the five P's. Five P's, proper preparations, prevent poor performance. Proper preparations, pro prevent poor performance. As a professional manager, you must understand and practice all that uh, we have elaborated so far so that the sky will be our starting point and not our limit. If you want the year prosperity, grow grains. If you want the year prosperity, grow grains. 10 years prosperity, grow trees. If you want 10 years prosperity, grow trees. 100 years prosperity, grow people. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Obakar. Thank you, sir. The Honorable Registrar. If not um, for time constraint, I know he is capable of keeping us here as um, long as possible. <clears throat> like I said earlier on, it's, it was um, a refresher course on those things that we are already aware of, but are not really taking it um, that important. In the course of um, his presentation, he has made us to understand the power of delegation. The truth is that even up to this uh, present age, some of um, the managers today, some of those of us who found ourselves at um, managerial level, we still operate in the archaic way of um, 
the way Moses was operating before his father-in-law Jethro gave him that powerful advice. You see, we have seen a situation whereby somebody, because of what he or she is sitting on, even when such person is due for promotion, the person will feel reluctant on going for that promotion because he or she doesn't want somebody else to know what is passing through that table which they are sitting. We have seen a situation whereby somebody is due for promotion and the immediate boss was willing, even happy to grant that promotion, but the person simply because of what he is gaining or what they are, the kind of uh, thing they are seated on in that particular office, declined to such um, to such promotion. It happens, but these are the things that we are out to change the scenario. Because as a manager, we are expected to put a square peg, a square peg in a square hole. As a manager, we should be able to navigate our organization to a greater height. And in the course of the presentation as well, he also told us about um, the, the powerful techniques of um, time management using the, the four Ds of time management. At times, you see people being preoccupied without even knowing which of the tasks that should be taken first. The paper is well um, equipped. It's something we can, um, at our own uh, given time, at our leisure time, we can go through it and um, try to digest it um, better. Let's not um, try to, let me not take uh, much time on that because time is really um, not um, favorable and we know today is weekend. There are other commitment as well. So on that note, let's go to the section of, um, questions, contributions, and observation before we now move to the induction uh, proper. Please, anyone with any question or contributions to what the registrar have, has uh, discussed so far, you can kindly unmute your microphone, tell us your name once again, and let's hear your view. Thank you. Any contributions? Anyone with questions? All right, I want to believe that um, the presentation is well um, understood and I can see some of um, some messages here already that um, shows that you people were pleased with the presentation of um, the registrar. Thank you all. And uh, I also want to believe that all of us have uh, the material to the presentation and we can as well go through it at our own um, given time. In that case, let's, um, let's prepare for the induction proper, which is um, the oath taking. And I want to believe that we all have um, the copy of um, the professional ethic of um, the Institute earlier sent to us which after the administration, we are supposed, we are expected to fill with our name, sign with today's date and scan back for proper documentation. On that note, let's get ready for the oath taking. It's still going to be administered by the Honorable Registrar of the Institute. Mr. Registrar, sir, are you still there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, All right, oath taking, sir. Thank you. That is the induction proper. You are still an intending member until uh, after the oath uh, is administered. That is when you become a bona fide member of the Institute. That is the code of ethics. 
and uh, professional conduct. This code of ethics and professional conduct describes the expectations that we have of ourselves and our fellow practitioners all over the world. It articulates the ideas to which we aspire, as well as the behavior that are mandatory in our professional volunteer roles. Therefore, as a member of the Institute, I, your name. I, just Nathan. I, Karba Matthias. I, Stephen. I, Inogir Warrior. I pledge to conduct myself professionally with truth, accuracy, fairness, and responsibility to the public. <laughs> to pay my annual membership subscription on the 2nd of every January. To foster the highest standards of professional competence among those whom are responsible. To enhance the proficiency and stature of the profession by acquiring and applying knowledge in the most appropriate way. To participate in our professional development programs so that one's knowledge and performance are enhanced. To dissociate to ourselves from anything that will tarnish the good image of the Institute or bring the Institute into disrepute. To honor confidence received or given because of professional activity. To comply with both the letter and the intent of the laws of the country in which I practice and agree contractual obligations. To cooperate, to cooperate with all with organizations organization and individuals individual engaged in activities which promote the which development, and standing, the development the and standing of the institute. To have a positive, have a positive at all times, time, and to respect the institute. And shall not disseminate, and shall not shall not disseminate false and misleading information. To abide by and to encourage others to practice the professional code of ethics of the institute. That I make this flight to good faith and in accordance with the policy of the Institute. In accordance with the policy of the institute. I understand that the institute reserves the right to suspend me. I understand that the institute or dismiss me summarily from me. membership. I know this means me. Of the institute, should I violate any of the above promises which are voluntarily made by me? Go so help me. Go 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 help me. Congratulations to everybody. Congratulations. 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 You are now a bona fide member of um, the Institute of Professional Managers and Admin. Congratulations. 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 All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations to each and every one of you. You are now a bona fide member of. Um, the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. And as a fellow, you can now use the designatory letters FIPMA after the writing of your name, FIPMA as a fellow. And as a full member, you can use MIPM. A, M I P M A as, as an associate, you use A I P M A, A I P M A. Congratulations, and you are all welcome to IPMA family. But before we go, there is a number I just dropped on the chat um chat handle now. 0816950737. It's a WhatsApp number that you are expected to send your send a WhatsApp message to so that we can send you a link where you can join the WhatsApp, um, WhatsApp group of the Institute and the Telegram and um, where you can get the day-to-day -day management tips and um, any updates about the Institute frequently and um, any possible trainings from the collaborating um, Institute with um, the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria in order to 
to enhance our our professionalism in management and um, administration. The number was again is 0816950737. It is on the chat um, button, chat handle there. You are expected to send a message with your name stating that you are one of the new inductees in today's, um, today's induction so that we can forward you the link and possibly you can as well get um, the recorded link of um, this uh, session for today. Congratulations once again, and you are all welcome to IPMA family. I will look forward to, to seeing you be, being a good ambassador of um, the Institute by promoting the Institute, telling, about, telling friends and colleagues about um, the happening in the Institute, how they can become a member by experience and um, qualification. You have to send the message to the WhatsApp handle um, with the number 081. Please, let's take the number again, not to send uh, to this um, chat handle here. The WhatsApp number I'm giving out now, 081 7337 081 and with respect to the certificate God's willing before the end of um, this by before the end of um, the new week which is going to start um on Monday, before the end of the five working days, hopefully you're going to receive a call from the office on how you can get your certificate. For those of us in Abuja, you can get a call on uh, how you can um, easily pick it up from the office and um, also those in Lagos as well, you will be contacted and um, those outside uh, Lagos, Port Harcourt and wherever you, your location is, we are going to get in touch with you on how you can um, easily get your certificate once um, they are ready. Congratulations once again, and you are all welcome on board. Before we go, the number once again is 081-6950-7337. Send a message to it with your name stating that you are one of um, the inductees in today's induction so that you can be added to the WhatsApp group or an other social media handle of the Institute and whereby you can get day-to-day -day newsletter about um, happening and a possible workshop either from the Institute or the collaborating um, sister Institute with IPMA Nigeria. Once again, you are all welcome on board and we are very happy to have you all in, um, in today's um, induction and becoming part of um, IPMA Nigeria. Congratulations to you all once again. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very happy. All right. Continue to stay safe and... Uh, Continue to stay safe. COVID-19 is still around the corner and the insecurity problem is also there. But we believe with time, we are going to win the war against every challenges that is facing us at, uh, as a nation. Congratulations to you all and you are all welcome to IFMA family. Thank you. Thank you.